This lesson deals with an ammeter, a voltmeter, and a Wheatstone bridge. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 2, starting with page 55. Let me first introduce a meter and its equivalent circuit. Let me scroll down to the picture here. A Dearson Wall meter is a device used to measure voltage or current. It's a coil mounted between poles of a permanent magnet, so it's free to rotate. The magnet produces a magnetic field that interacts with the coil current to produce a torque, which causes the coil to turn. The deflection of the pointer attached to the coil is linearly proportional to the current. The symbol we use for an ammeter is a circle with an A inside of it. The actual ammeter has some wiring resistance, and we represent that just as a resistance R sub M. This table has some typical values found in a catalog for various meters. Talk about the full scale deflection of the pointer. So if you had a zero to 50 microamp deflection, you might have some resistance of that meter between 1K and 5K. 500 microamp full scale deflection, 100 to 1000 ohms. 1 milliamp full scale deflection, somewhere between 30 to 120 ohms. 10 milliamp full scale deflection, between one to four ohms. Suppose you wanted to use one of these meters to measure more than the full scale deflection. Well, we could use the idea of a current divider to let some of that current go into a parallel resistance and the remainder going into the meter. We could then calculate what our new full scale deflection would be. This parallel resistor is also called a shunt. Let's just do an example to see how this might work out. Let's take a one milliamp meter movement and suppose that the coil resistance is about 50 ohms. So let's pick a resistor that we'd put in parallel with that meter to get a full scale deflection, not of one milliamp, but 150 milliamps. Let's draw a schematic. This usually helps take a word problem and visualize it in, as terms of things we've been talking about in the course. So here's my meter with 50 ohms and for a full scale deflection, I have one milliamp flowing through it but I want to use this to measure a much larger current, say 150 milliamps. So when that comes in, it's going to current divide, and I want 149 milliamps to go here, one milliamp to go here, and then the rest goes back out again. So I got a current divider that the current in this resistance here is going to be the other resistance over the sum of the two times the current that's coming in, and likewise going back out of 150 milliamps. Again, all that should be equal to the current in this resistance, which is 149 milliamps. So let's solve this for our shunt. Multiply these two, divide by the 149 milliamps, and bring this on the other side of the equation, and then subtract the 50. We end up getting 335.6 milliohms. Now we can use the same meter to also make a voltmeter out of it. Here we're going to add a series resistance and basically create a voltage divider. This series resistance is usually called a multiplier. Take this meter from the last example and make a 10 volt full scale voltmeter. Okay, so we've got 10 volts applied, have a voltage across my meter, and remember for full scale deflection it's 1 milliamp and the total resistance is 50 ohms. So we're talking about only 50 millivolts here. So if I have 10 volts here, I'm going to drop the difference across this resistor. Okay, let's use our voltage divider then. 50 millivolts is equal to 10 volts times 50 now, or 50 plus this R multiplier. Now let's solve for our multiplier. To multiply these two, divide by 50 milli, bring this over here, and subtract the 50. Get 9.95k ohms. We could use the same meter, which actually responds to current, to measure bigger currents and to measure voltages. This following example is what's called a Wheatstone bridge. It again uses one of these meter movements, but this time to measure resistance. Let me state the theorem or the property of the Wheatstone bridge, and then we'll proceed to show why it's true. I have four resistors, call them R1, R2, R3, and R sub X, and I'll put a meter between this connection of R1, R3, and R2, and R sub X. I could vary R1, R2, or R3 such that the current in the meter is zero, and the value of R sub X is equal to R2 times R3 divided by R1. Now, why would that be true? Let's take a look at the condition here of zero current. 
The current here is zero, and the current in R1 is the same as R3. Likewise, the current in R2 is the same as R sub x. Now with no current in the meter, that means that there's also no voltage across the meter, whether the meter is ideal or, or real. So the voltage across R3 is the same as the voltage across R sub x. So let's use that to show the relationship. Because the current in R1 and R3 is the same, we could use the voltage divider. Again, we normally couldn't do this if this meter had some current flowing through it. But since R1 and R3 have the same current, we can use the voltage divider rule. Same is true for R2 and R sub x. What's interesting here is V sub s drops out. Let's divide numerator and denominator by R3. So I get one here, one here, and R1 over R3. Likewise here, let's divide the numerator and denominator by R sub x. So I get one, one, and R2 over R sub x. If these two equations are equal, then this quantity has to equal this quantity. So I have R1 over R3 equaling R2 over R sub x. Let's just cross multiply here. So I've got R1 Rx equals R2 R3. I can solve for R sub x. The commercial Wheatstone bridge, the resistances R1, R2, or R3 are a series of resistances interconnected with switches. So as you turn the knobs of these switches, there's a number indicating value of R sub x. A couple things to also mention here. If we were to make this into a device to measure a resistance, the value of V sub s isn't critical. So we could have a battery pack, and that battery pack could be aging and maybe changing with time. This formula this is hard to, to remember, but if you go back to the original bridge, this expression here, R1 times R sub x equaling R2 times R3, these were the values of the resistors that were across from each other. So we're just going to scroll back to this previous page. And so if you want to remember the Wheatstone bridge condition in the future, it's R1 times Rx equals R2 times R3. And again, this is only true when the current in the meter is zero. So the Wheatstone bridge can be used to measure an unknown resistance. It can also be used to measure other things, and we'll pursue this in other courses. This is how you can use a meter to measure current, measure voltage, or measure resistance.